How does today's announcement fit in with the overall narrative about the executive departures and lack of stability in the executive ranks at Tesla? Yeah, today was really about making it official. It really surprised the market in January when Elon Musk announced that this guy was going to be appointed CFO. He was a relative unknown uh, to people outside of the company. Here's a guy who spent basically his entire career working there, working his way up, except for going to business school. And so here he is at the, the, you know, the top of the company, you know, a young guy, uh, well-liked internally, uh, but uh, not a public face uh, to investors at this point. On that point, Tim, do you think uh, investors welcome the sort of internal promotion, that the sense that uh, he's likely to be able to get on uh, with Elon Musk, or would they like to have seen someone external, a credible candidate that they know well already? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge here, right? Clearly, uh, Tesla has had a lot of churn in that, those top uh, positions. Uh, Elon Musk, by all accounts, is, uh, could be difficult to work with. And here, um, the people that he's promoting now into these C-suite uh, roles, whether it's the general counsel or the CFO or the, this new chief accounting officer, these are people who have spent time in the organization. They understand the culture and they understand how to work with Elon Musk. And that's, uh, that's a key thing to be having a long-term career at Tesla is, is kind of understanding that very unique culture. Uh, you see when people come from the outside who've had long, lengthy careers at uh, established places, sometimes they really struggle there. Well, Tim, I, I assume um, that if, in fact, it really were uh, mostly just about knowing the culture and being able to get along with Musk, then a lot of this turnover might seem relatively benign. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of critics of the company that say, look, your general counsel leaves when you have legal issues, when your CFO leaves and you actually have either dicey financials, you have to make these bond payments, or people are questioning your accounting at the end of quarters, that's a little bit less benign. Yeah, it raises questions, no doubt, and that is adding to the drama surrounding the company. Uh, and you have no doubt that they want to stop that churn because it just continues to raise more and more questions at a time when they're really trying to focus on ramping up production of the Model 3 and continually getting that vehicle out and cutting the costs. They've got different dramas uh, on different days. Uh, Tim, uh, how important is the Model Y to the future of the company? And what do you make of the timing uh, of uh, the upcoming announcement? Well, the Model Y is uh, going to be supremely important to the company if, in fact, they want to become a mainstream car company, a mainstream electric car company. It, this compact SUV, that's really where the, the market is going here in the U.S. and in China. In China, uh, small uh, SUVs account for one in five sales. In the U.S., it's heading that way. People don't really want to buy cars anymore in the U.S. They want to buy small uh, SUVs that uh, drive like cars, but you sit up higher, you can see things, and you got a lot of room in the trunk for your junk. And that's where the market is. Uh, small cars, not so much. So here, here we are looking at Tesla, trying to get into the most, probably most important market that they can be if they're going to really get to those million unit sales a year that Elon keeps talking about.